Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing another Einstein Analytics video on advanced data modeling. And in this episode, we're going to put a bullet in joined reports by creating data sets that have parents with multiple child objects at the same grain. So let's get started. We start out with uh, two tables of child information, child A and child B, as well as parent data. We need to get this all on the same data set. Now this is the same child A and parent that we uh, covered in the last video, so this should be familiar. Uh, and let's take a look at the data flow that we're going to use to do this. So we're going to get both of our children. We're going to do compute expressions to get them into a similar structure and then we're going to append them together. After that, it proceeds just as any other normal data flow would. So why do we need to do these two compute expressions? Well, think of it like uh, combining two different Excel tables. You need to make sure that your column structure is identical if you're just going to append rows onto the bottom of, of one or the other tables. So if any column does or does not exist in the other table, you have to make sure to create that. And you also want to make sure that those columns flow in the correct order. So among the different columns that we have here, there's really four categories that we have. Either they are common, in which case uh, the data type is the same, the API name is the same, and uh, what we're actually talking about with this column is the same. Then we have unique columns where uh, the uh, column is not present on the other data set and it doesn't bear any relevance on what that data set is. In this case, uh, child A does not have cluster or extent and child B does not have level and score. So we are going to need to create columns so that we can have all four of these. And for the data sets that don't have this data, we're just going to have to put in a dummy value to uh, kind of hold that column. Then we also have analogous columns where they're basically the same thing, but we're going to have some minor structural difference. In this case, the API names are different. On child A, I just have name, and on child B, I have child B name. So we're just going to reformat these to have a consistent um, naming structure, and we're going to consider these analogous. Lastly, we have require scrubbing, in which case, uh, you know, the two columns are conveying the same information to us, but the data that is contained within them and or the name is just not uh, aligned. So, for example, on the child uh, B, I see cat A, cat B, and cat C, while on child A, I have category A, category B, and category C. This is going to require me to do some uh, case statements in a compute expression to get them into a common value. Um, I might be able to strip out the last character, but you're going to have to do some degree of hard coding. And on a long enough timeline, you may need to go and update this should new values enter the system that your existing logic does not account for. So we take a look at the JSON, the first thing to call out and definitely the most important is that we have to have merge with source set to false on these uh, structuring computes. The reason why is because we're actually going to have to create every column of the table that's going to hold both objects in order. We need to make sure that uh, there are uh, columns for everything that's common, unique, analogous, or requires uh, scrubbing. So first, let's take a look at one that's uh, common. Uh, record ID. Now, we do need to change the name from ID to something else because you can't use the same name in the same data set twice, even though we're going to be dropping that column. Uh, so I've renamed it to record. If your use case requires that the column names remain consistent with the originals, possibly because you're adding on to an existing data set, then you'll need to do a second compute and a slice node to remove everything. And actually, you can probably get away without the slice. There's a few ways to do that. Uh, then another thing to call out, um, I always include the object name as a column uh, when I do these sort of transformations. It helps for much better filtration and I don't need uh, five different data sets to do this job. This data set can be repurposed to anything that it, it's contained. So next thing that we're going to look at is going to be unique fields. Uh, so for example, the field level uh, on, on the source data set, well, it's only found on A, so we're just going to, you know, use our SQL expression here of grabbing the field name. It's nothing complex there. And then if we look at cluster, uh, this is an example of a dimension that is not found on child A. So we're basically going to pass in um, a quoted escaped hyphen to represent our dummy value. Uh, similarly, uh, rating is found on both, uh, score is, is only found on the source, and extent is only found on the destination. So for uh, dimensions, I'll typically throw in a zero, and if I'm worried about this uh, interfering with aggregation, uh, what I'll typically do is just filter it out using my object field that I showed above. So next would be something that's analogous. 
uh, that's really straightforward. That's just going to be the, the record name. So I wanted to keep the label the same, so I just relabeled it name, but uh, I've given it the unique column name of uh, child name. This is gonna allow me to not use the same column name twice, but still see the same thing on the screen. Again, uh, work with whatever your use case is gonna call for. And then for the last thing, requires scrubbing, we're actually going to need to take a look at the other compute, which has the example of this. So that would be structure B. And if we look down here, we had to do a simple case statement. Now, I, I probably could have just grabbed the rightmost character and concatenated. There's a number of different ways that you can uh, skin the cat here. But either way, we do need to convert the value of the category field so that it's going to be consistent with what we find on A. Uh, which data set you choose to recognize as the primary and adapt to the other, it's really your personal preference or uh, whichever one contains values that are more uh, interpretable for the end user. Uh, but you will need to make that distinction. So in this case, uh, we're doing the recalc on child B, and child A is preserving the original structure. So for example, we're converting cat A into category A to match the structure of our base data set, which we're going to make uh, A. You don't have to do this for every single field. You can alternate. So uh, depending on wherever you think it's easier to, uh, to do the lifting, do it on that side. So that's my recommendation for how we restructure those fields. So just to run through that again, we uh, digest child A and child B. We restructure them using these two compute expressions. And then after this, we're going to append them together, which is effectively just copy and pasting on the bottom of, an, of an, the Excel sheet now that we've restructured them to be of an identical form. After this, it, it gets very simple. We just uh, grab our parent records. We're going to add them with an augment node so we have additional columns about that parent information. And then we just register. So here's our completed data set. Uh, first column is going to call out what object it's coming from. We also have the ID column, just not showing it. Um, our name column, we did need to restructure it slightly to uh, realign the names, but it was analogous. It bears the same information. It's just as useful as before. Uh, our category column has been restructured so that the data is groupable and that values are consistent even though the nomenclature for them may be different from object to object. Our level column is going to be found only on data set A. Uh, well, object A, really. They're all one data set now. While cluster is only found on object B. Uh, score, likewise, is only seen on A. Extent is only seen on B. Rating is seen on both. And then there's our uh, related parent information. Hey, our last uh, B object doesn't even have a parent. So uh, this is really uh, what we're trying to get to. It's just one data set where both of these different children are going to be at one grain as if they were the same object all along. So I think if all we're trying to set out to do is really just replicate a joined report, we can probably just use the, the connected data sources feature to achieve this. Uh, but this is really going to go one step beyond what joined reports ever could do. Um, but there's so many reasons not to use joined reports. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing feature that I've leveraged a ton of times in the past, but so many caveats. You can only display uh, 2,000 records on the screen. The, even when you export, you can't really break that limitation. They're laggy, they're difficult to use. Um, the cross-object formulas don't really like know very well, but most things don't, so that is kind of understandable. Um, not only, this isn't just a replication of existing functionality, it's really kind of a limit break. And uh, unlike joined reports, these things look great on lightning pages. So uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, please subscribe, tell a friend, uh, give me recommendations for what you would like to see more of. And as always, thanks for watching.